So each table here within Access Database represents an entity. Like for example, in the case of Northwind Database, which is a sample database, we have uh, basically like products table, which represents all available products in your company. We have, for example, customers that are buying your products. We have orders that customers are placing, and then we have order items, for example, that you know identifies the uh, detail of each order and so forth. So each table can represent a particular entity. Now, of course, each a specific entity might have different instances. Like you might have many customers, you might have many orders, and so forth. And tables could have relationship. In other words, tables might be related. What customer has placed what order? What order has what order items, and so forth. So these are the concept of basic of databases that we are not going to really get into the detail of them in this class. We assume you already have that knowledge, and now we learn how to programmatically access those values. Another object is query. The query itself is like a view in SQL Server uh, 7 or 2000, perhaps. is a subset of actual table, or is a combination of many other tables. So query, as the name indicates, means what do you want to see? What do you want to have? So it goes and takes a look at the particular table or multiple tables and bring the data for you. Then you have form, which is actually a graphical element that can visualize information for you. So you can actually see everything into a category. In other words, you can see one record at a time or could see many records at the same time. And then, of course, you have reports, which is another way of presenting the data. And actually, it creates some sort of a pre-formatted or pre-printed format for the records that you like to show or perhaps print it on the printer. Then, of course, you have HTML pages new to Access 2000 and 2002. You can basically go and create an HTML page or create reports and give it to your web developers. And basically, all those information could be shown over the internet. At the same time, you could create macros. Macros are pre-formatted languages that are being created by graphical tools. So if you're not a programmer, macros are an excellent tool. You can start doing the macro, start recording a macro, and do whatever you do graphically using the menus or toolbars, perhaps, and then stop recording, and you go to the module, you automatically see a module gets created for you, and then all the languages are being basically written for you. The syntax is being created. So if you're not a programmer, or if you're a programmer, and you don't know exactly how to do something, the shortcut to it is start macro, Go do the action graphically because you are familiar with that and basically stop the macro. Take a look at the code, copy paste it, put it in your own code, modify it the way you want it. That's a shortcut for you. And then finally modules. Modules are basically a component that Access uses and you can actually reuse these modules in many different databases. Modules are basically a library. In other words, you can go and place any functions in it and keep reusing it from many different forms or many different tables and so forth. And then, of course, the whole thing together represents a database. So by going through this specific introduction, I've already mentioned that. What does an access database consist of? So that was an overview of an access application. I'd like to go and launch access 2002 or 2000, doesn't matter which version you have, for the first time. And as you see, by the first time it comes up, it is going to ask you, would you like to create what sort of a database? You can create a blank database. You can create a blank data access page. You can create a project that is communicating with a particular database, SQL Server database, or perhaps a, you know, ADP, they call it, or the MDB. You see there are two different flavors of it, MDB or ADP. If I go to File and select New, it's actually bringing up a specific uh, wizard in here. If I select the general templates, as you see, the template itself points to the blank database, blank web database, existing page, or new databases in here. So as you see, if I select the new database wizard for the first time, is giving me the ADP extension. The ADP extension is being used every single time you want to do the two-tier model. That means you want to migrate your data to a SQL Server database, or you want to migrate it into basically the MSDE database, or Microsoft Data Engine. We are not going to discuss this just yet, the ADP. 
But just consider that now new to Access 2000 and 2002, we have two different extensions. We have the old version of it, or Microsoft Database, which is compatible with Office 97. And then we have the ADP, which is basically a migrated version of your Access 97 into SQL. So what, what, do, what is ADP once again? Imagine you have an MDB database, which is an old-fashioned way of dealing with access, and now your company gets bigger. Your company wants to have security. Your, one, your company wants to have concurrency, transaction support, and a stored procedure perhaps. Many, many different things that SQL Server and Oracle perhaps give you. So you have already spent hours developing forms, graphical elements, menus, and people are used to that. So, but you want to have that advantage too. And you don't want to really spend money in order to create a VB application or C++ application, Windows-based application for that. So what do we do? Microsoft has provided a wizard for you. They say, okay, where is your access database? We bring it and we cut it into half. We separate the data from the front end and then we, we can place the data into a database, onto the SQL Server or Oracle or wherever you want, wherever you want, basically. And then we keep the user end, end user section of it, or front end application, into an access. So it still you can maintain it. It still you can go and do whatever you do, as far as the form, modules, and everything else, but keep the data into a SQL Server. And you can back it up that way. You can basically do anything you want. At the same time, you don't have to know a new tool because all those objects in SQL Server or Oracle will be exposed within the access program. So you can actually create a stored procedure, you could create new tables, you could do anything you do, but instead of keeping it within the MDB file, you're placing it somewhere else. So the access data project, or ADP file, is designed for two-tier model. But we're not gonna discuss that because there are other courses just talk about that. Let's just focus on the MDB and get into the programming concept to begin with. So I cancel this. I have already created a simple database in here. And as you see, this is the table, query, form, report, page, macro, and module. And basically, there are different uh, wizards available that show us how to do all that. So let's move on. And in this section, now we like to go and talk about modules because that's the whole course all about. This is programming with Access 2000. So out of all these uh, specific items in here, we are mainly working with modules. This is the course all about, course 1300. So let's switch back in here and talk about modules. Before beginning to program in Access, you need to understand the following terms. A statement. A single line of programming code is called an statement. Like for example, do something. Execute this. Open that. These are all statements. There are some keywords which are already defined within Access Programming. These keywords are already pre-written into the Access Library. So you cannot use them as a variable name. So the keywords are being explained as we go on. And as a matter of fact, if you use the VB Editor, Basically, they are using a different color for it. There are different color coding for it, so you're not going to make a mistake. Some of the keywords is like if, is like then. You cannot use then as, as a variable name, for example. Then you have procedure. Procedure is a set of statements that they work together as one single component. Then you have module. Modules can hold one or more procedures. In other words, module is a group of procedures, and a procedure is a group of a statement that they work together. As an analogy, consider a statement as a city, a procedure as a state, and basically a module as the United States. So think about it that way. And then, of course, if you take a look at this graphical representation, you can see that the module can have many different procedures defined within it. So from another module, I can call any procedure from any other module. Of course, there are access modifiers that you can say, oh, this procedure is only publicly defined, so everybody can use it, or you can say it's privately defined, no one else can see it but you. So some of the modules could be private, some of them could be public. Some of the procedures could be public, some of them could be private. So you can actually set that up programmatically. So how do we create a module to begin with? Well, basically, you gotta go to the database window, and on the object bar, click Modules. The same thing that I did in here. That's the first step. And then click New in order to create a new module. All I need to do now, 
right click in here if I want to and you see there are no specific relationship of what but not right now if I select new automatically it will actually create a new module for me so right here on the new icon in here if I click new automatically jumps to the VBA or VB editor and as you see it opens up my first module in here so basically using this module I can put anything I want, I can declare any variable, I can define any processes and so forth. So after you created your module, you basically want to use it. So in this demonstration, let's go ahead and declare a variable. I'm just getting ahead of the course a little bit. In order to declare a variable, all you need to do is specify the dim keyword and say my variable, for example, and you can use as keyword as a type of, for example, dabble. I'm declaring a variable as type dabble. And then of course I create a sub procedure by putting a sub keyword. I call it my sub procedure. And automatically by pressing enter, it will close the sub procedure block, which we're going to get back to this later on. So this sub procedure will basically show me or do something for me as I say. So in this scenario, what I like to do, I like to copy paste my variable in here. I'm putting a value of 2.0, which is actually a double value. Automatically, the VBA changes that to pound. That means it's a double value. And then within the message box, I can actually show the value of my variable. So this is a sub-procedure. How it's going to be called, it depends on my particular program. I can actually create a form, put a button, and call that module. And basically, you can see how it works. But basically, that's how you're making your module. This is a library of available procedures in it. In order to save it, all you need to do, select save. So basically this is saving the entire database or it could basically save the module itself. So the module automatically got saved and here I have on the general declaration, I have a variable and I have a procedure in there. So if we switch back to our application here for a second, as you see on the toolbar, if I click save, automatically saves the entire modules for me. Now if I switch back to the VBA editor, this is the toolbar and save. Automatically asks me to place a name for my modules. So I call this, for example, my module instead and click OK. So basically, I created my first module within Access Programming. Now let's say you're done with this and now you have a module. In order to open this module, all you need to do, double click on it and automatically you come back to it. So just in case if you want to modify it in the future, you can again go back to the access bar and double click on that module and that way you are opening it up. In order to delete it, all you need to do, basically select it and right click at it and say delete. You can get rid of your modules if you want to, if you're not needing it anymore. Be careful, deletion of a module might affect other pieces of application. If you're referring to that module, you're not supposed to delete it. So I assume that you're already familiar with everything. So let's go back to the module designer and see what are the components available in there. Part of my module, part of this particular module editor, there are different sections. If I point at that section, the tooltip will tell me that this is an object component. Part of the object component, as you see, all available objects within that module will appear in here. In this section, since I don't have any other objects but the module, I don't see any other objects. If you go to the form, you, you are going to see all available objects in that form. Here is a procedure combo box that shows all available procedures in there. Let's go ahead and create our second procedure and I call it, for example, sub my second proc. And basically, right now, you see there are two procedures listed on the procedures tab. So as you add more procedures on the procedures, you see more procedures listed. So you can actually programmatically manipulate. So as you see in here, you have the object, you have the procedure box, and then uh, inside of the editor, you have the general declaration, and then you have the procedure section. So basically, you can get into this particular editor and create any specific sub-procedure as you want to. As a review, I have a video in which it summarizes how to create the sub-procedures for you.